what is it, like, what's the starting point for you in terms of what you want to see from the offense as a whole this week and over the last four weeks? Yeah. Uh, well, first off, during the bye week, it's, it's a good time to go back and study yourselves, um, what you've done well, uh, what you haven't done well, and, and, and what, what are the reasons for that. Um, study personnel, but that, that was a big part of it, you know, in addition to getting a little jump start on Purdue. So, you know, the, the biggest thing that we got out of that is like, you know, the things that we're not doing well, how, how are we going to fix those? How are we going to practice those? And then how do we capitalize on the things we're going to do well, or have already done well? And, uh, it kind of helps your mindset going into the, when you put together the game plan for the next opponent. Um, what's challenging maybe about about Purdue's defense numerically, statistically, they've really improved from yeah. last year the previous year. What's, what's challenging about the handling? What, uh, what's challenging about that? Uh, yeah, they're, they're you know they're. They're much improved. I think they're number three in the league in total defense in a good defensive league. I think they're a top 10 team. They've created a lot of turnovers. I know against Iowa, I think they were a like plus four, plus five. That, that's a big deal. Uh, they have the, the special player with Karloftis. I mean, they're, they're good across the board. Um, Karloftis is a difference maker. He's, you know, he's every bit as good as the guy, I think, from Michigan. He's a, he's a difference maker. Um, he didn't play against us last year. But he creates a lot of havoc. You always got to be aware he where he is. Uh, you know they they've, they've created a lot of negative plays for teams, uh, which puts you behind the sticks. So we got to stay out of negative plays. And to their credit, they haven't given up a lot of big plays. Uh, you know, I know Wisconsin, um, you know, especially throwing the ball. Uh, they, they've done a good job in the back end of, of protecting themselves, and so they, they play really sound. So we got work cut out for us. strength that was stronger than you thought or a weakness that was maybe a little bit more glaring than what you think about it as you go along? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things. You kind of know that because after each game, you really uh, get in and dissect and analyze what what was wrong. You kinda, the wrong stuff already kind of jumps out at you. You know, we've got to be more consistent in the red zone. Uh, we've got to protect better. Uh, you know, we got we got to run the ball more consistently on first down. That stuff you kind of already know. You get the specifics is like certain plays. Like, hey, you know, we're not we're we have bad leverage on this play. You know, we're not getting our right angles. The receivers are could be a yard deeper on this play. You know, and just the the, the actual details of the play is what shows up. The big picture stuff, which I know you guys see, stuff that we got to get better. Uh, we pretty much already know that. It's kind of the the details, but the details are what makes those plays work. And so that's that's the fine finer point is hey how can we get better on our details um, at each position to, to make those plays work better. Did focus on deep as the coordinator you're obviously the receiver's position coach. Sure. Sure. Focus on those details. Do you look globally at, at everything too in the last week? And when you say we got to protect better, you, your team has to protect better. What is what does that look like detail wise? Like what do you guys have to do better to protect better? Yeah, I'll start with the protect better question because that's. That's not just the old line. That's developing pass concepts where the quarterback knows where he's going, where the ball can come out sooner. That's the running back knowing who he's supposed to block when they bring a blitz. So it really, and it's also the receivers getting open. That, that's part of it too. Um, so it's that's really a whole offensive thing too, as far as protection better. And then yeah, when I look at it, it's you know what does Adrian do well? What have, what have, what what have our running backs done well? What is stuff that we haven't done well and why? Is it worth you know is it worth fixing it? or move on more to stuff that we've been doing well. So all those things come up when you look at the big picture uh, from, from my standpoint. Yeah. Ross said, I think it was last week during the bye week, Ross talked about sort of letting it rip and you know, being more aggressive right from the start. And I think we talked about sort of the, you know, the script and you want to run your best stuff first. So how do you walk that line between accomplishing what you want to in terms of you know, feeling out of defense and then also maybe trying to you know, be a little bit yeah, you, you try to incorporate both, you know, and when you uh, you go into a game with what uh, in a game plan of stuff that you think you number one that you do well, number two that you that works maybe against a defense that looks that you're getting, um, and then you want to call your your best stuff first. But then situations can kind of jump around too if you get into a long long, long yardage situation. You know, sometimes and they're playing pass. It's not easy to be aggressive when it's when it's third and twenty. You know, so so little things like that. So you got to be able to adjust. But the the biggest thing is you know when you're developing a game plan, you can make an aggressive game plan. You know, and uh, 
and so that that's part of it. And then just kind of adjusting as the game goes on. How, how aggressive have you guys been? Like, what if you guys want to let it rip more? How, what's that next step of aggressiveness? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I know uh, you know that was a big focal point from last season to this season is create more big plays. And uh, I know statistically in the passing game, I think we're up there as far as uh, plays past 20 yards for a top 10 team or whatever that is. Um, so, I, so we've seen a little bit of that. But at, at the same time, it, you know, aggressive doesn't just mean throwing the ball down the field. It could mean the way you know, you're getting the ball on the perimeter. So there, there's a lot of things that, that go into that. But it, it, it's also a mindset of just physicality, where, uh, not just up front, but the whole team. And, and everyone just playing aggressive you know, and coming off the ball. And running off the ball, you know, um, and so and not getting guys to hesitate. And part of being aggressive from an offensive stance is from the coaches. We can, we got to keep it simple enough for our players that they know they can come out and be aggressive and play fast and not think. That's that's where the aggressiveness starts. And then the plays are the plays are plays. Scott mentioned last week, um, guys like Benson, Manning, um, maybe haven't gotten as many game reps because they've not had enough practice reps. To Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just they, they've had it first of all in the bye. Um, yeah, we're we're as healthy as we've ever been. Everyone's in a good place, and uh, they practice really well. Um, but yeah, that, that a lot of that stuff goes into when you, when you put guys on the field, whatever position it is, you got to take into consideration, you know, their health during the game, their health in practice, and uh, and how they prepare. All, all that stuff goes into factor. But everyone right now is, is in a good place. Like I said, knock on wood, it's the healthiest we've been. And those two guys specifically have had a really good bye week and good week this week. Monitoring their health during the game, like you said, which is uh, maybe kept them out in some key moments. Sure. I, I'm sure they want to get out there all the time. How do you guys balance you know, wanting to get your best playmaker out on the field and also trying to protect those guys from themselves? Yeah, I mean, I, we, we listen to them. We listen to the trainers. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a combination thing. And yeah, obviously, guys want to be out there. Sometimes it's unfortunate things. Injuries are out of your control. Um, so it's kind of a combination of you know listening to the trainers, listening to them, and 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 then the other thing is we feel like we have pretty good depth. So you know it's the, the next guy up, ready, ready to roll. And we've had we've had various guys make plays. Uh, so you know it's just it's kind of a, it's a good question. It's a complicated one because it's, it's not like just a black and white answer. Yeah, really good player, fast, athletic, uh, does well in coverage, uh, but also physical. I mean, they can put him in the box, and he's physical. Um, it's showing that he, I mean, when he's a blitzer, he's he's good pass rusher coming off the edge. So yeah, he's a he's another really good football player that, that we got to be aware of. Yeah, you know, he's shoot, he's been really good day one since I got here. Um, you know, he, he always works to get better. Uh, he he, he kind of drives the emotion at practice. He's a he's a leader along with Adrian. And so that, that's the biggest thing is just, you know, he's always trying to work on his craft. He's always, you know, he's not satisfied with his past performance. So he, he comes out um, each practice trying to get better. And so that's made him, and I don't, the fans and statistically he's really good as a receiver but he's also a really good blocker we ask a lot of them and so he really tries to work on all areas of his game and the fact that he's a perfectionist that he always thinks he can be better he's not satisfied that's to me why he keeps getting better thank you guys